Hello folks. I welcome you all to this video on if you can run Python on your Android phone. Now, many a times it would happen that we do not have a laptop or desktop with us and we would want to implement the same Python code on our Android phones. So this is where we have this app called as PyDroid3. Now this is one of the many Python interpreters which is available on the Android store. So we can just go ahead and install this PyDroid3 app onto our Android phones and start working with it. Now there are other apps as well such as QPython3 or Python Programming Interpreter. Now I somehow found that this PyDroid3 is the best among all of the Python interpreters which are available on Android store. And that is because of its interface and also the execution time of the Python code. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy, a free initiative by Great Learning. You can access over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion. Check out the link in the description of the video below. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you do not miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or suggestions and I'll respond to your comments. Let me just go ahead and open this app for you guys. And this is how the interface of PyDroid3 looks like. So you see your keyboard over here and you can just go ahead and start typing something like this. Now, if you're not really good with mobile phones, this might take you a bit of time to get habituated with this interface because the keys are very small over here. Now, let's go ahead and start with our Python programming. Now, let's say if I would want to start off by writing something very simple. So I just want to print out something onto the screen. So I would just have this print statement over here. And inside this, what I shall do is let me go ahead and add in a quote over here. And I'll just put in a simple hello world and then I'll press enter. And as you see over here, we get the result hello world. So it's as simple as this. So all you have to do is go to your console over here and then you can write whatever that is you do want to do. Now, what we've done over here is we've just written a simple print statement. Now after this, let's do something complicated. So we'll work with different data structures as well. Now what I'd want to do is I'd want to create a tuple. So I'll just write down T1 over here. And what I'll do is if we want to create a tuple, I would need these round braces and inside this I will just pass in one two three four let me put in a comma over here and I'll also have a five and then I'll hit on run let me actually I'd have to print this as well what I've done right now is only created this tuple but I would also have to print this out so I'll use the print statement and inside this parenthesis I'll just give in t1 now, when I hit on run, you would see that I've got this particular result. Similarly, let's say if I would want to maybe um, create a list. So if you would have to create a list, I would just have L1 written over here. And inside this, I will have square braces and I'll have one, two, three, four. Let me also have a four and let me have a five over here. And after that, similarly, let me take in the print statement. And inside this, I will pass in L1. And here, as you see, we have created a list as well. Now, just to be sure, if I would want to check if this is actually a list, let me use, let me put in another print statement over here. Inside this, I will use the type method. I will give in parenthesis again, and I'll pass in L1 this time. And this time when I hit enter, you would see that below the list, which is one, two, three, four, and five, I would also have this type, which is class list. So it's as simple as this. Now going ahead, we will also work with the next data structure, which is actually a data frame. Um, so actually we are working with a dictionary and not a data frame. So I'll just give this the name of D one and then I'll give an equal to, I would need curly braces over here. Now the special part of a dictionary is you have key value pairs over here. So you can't just go ahead and give normal values. We'd have to have 
a pair of key and value now i'll just show you how that can be done so let me give in the first key and i'll call it as k1 let me take in a proper space over here let me give in k1 and after this let me assign a value for the same so i'll give in a colon and then i'll have let's just call it 10 so k1 is the first key and the value for the same is 10 now i'll just give in a space for this and i'll go ahead and give in the next key so let me give in quotes over here and i will call this as k2 now let me align this properly let me give in another colon over here and let me give in the value as 20. so i've created this dictionary d1 which has two key value pairs k1 10 and k2 20 now let me just go ahead and print out this so print inside this i will pass in d1 let me hit on run and you see that i have successfully printed this out now similarly let's say if i would want to ensure that this is actually a dictionary let me also check the type of this so i'll again use the print statement inside this i will use the type method and inside the type method i will pass in d1 over here and you see this is class dict which would basically stand for dictionary now also i would want to individually extract the keys and values from this so i'll use the print statement and inside this i'll have d1 dot keys now let me hit run so when i have d1 dot keys you see that i have extracted k1 and k2 so k1 and k2 over here are the keys now similarly let's say if i would want to extract the values i'll just use in the print statement over here inside this i'll write down d1 dot values and then i need to give in the parenthesis i'll and I'll just click this plus button over here. And as you see, I have also printed out 10 and 20. So as simple as this, guys. So yes, we can definitely run Python on our Android phone. And we are using this app called as PyDroid. And as you see, this is how we have done a lot of different things. And you also have a lot of different options over here on this app. So if you want to change some settings, just go to this tab over here. So you have the appearance option. You can change the font size. So let's say if I would want to increase the font size, let me just keep it 30 font as well. I can change the font style. So maybe I'll just keep it as default bold. Now let me go back. And as you see, I have increased the size of this text over here. Now, similarly, I'll go back to settings over here. And if I would want to change the appearance, I'll go to editor theme. Now, let's say I have this called as solarized dark. I'll again go back. Now, as you see, this is what solarized dark looks like. Now, let me hit enter. So in the result pane, you'll see that the size will not change. So your terminal would be sort of the same. It's just that where you're coding the editor window, you can change the style of it. Now we have a lot of different things again. So we've got the interpreter as well. And then we've got the terminal as well over here and you have a lot of different options. So folks, if you'd want to work with Python on Android, this would be the best app for you to get started. So thank you very much guys and have a great learning ahead. I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy, a free initiative by Great Learning. You can access over 200 plus courses with thousand plus hours of free content on trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion. Check out the link in the description of the video below. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you do not miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or suggestions and I'll respond to your comments.